When you feel confident painting leaves, everything else starts to feel easy. Effortless, gorgeous leaf clusters, vines, individual leaves are kind of the heart and soul of any painting where flowers or anything organic is involved. So when you don't feel comfortable with leaves, you feel a little bit uncomfortable with your painting. It's kind of like trying to binge watch seasons of the Gilmore Girls reboot without having watched the original. It's fun, but uh, not everything makes sense. Can you tell I love me some TV? So today we're gonna create a glossary of 10 leaves. Yeah, I know, me and my charts. But trust me, friends, you're gonna have everything you need to build expert leaves in pretty much any painting experience you encounter. Here's the chart I'm working from, 10 spots to paint shapes and 10 bigger spots to paint leaves and clusters. Let's get into it. Number one, the needle. I'm using my quarter inch dagger, load up with any green you love. And in that first small section, you're going to press and lift with the curved edge of your dagger facing the page. Press and lift. Now That's let's your put this to use in real life and repeat that going over and over again on two sides, basically around an imaginary line in the middle and you have a pine needle. Now you have a feel for how this chart building is gonna go, but I promise you towards the end, we're actually going to put all these leaves together and use them in a real painting. Let's keep going. Next up, we have the long leaf. Press, drag on a curve, curve side brush down and lift and repeat. Let's give it a try in real life. You can make these descending in size around an invisible center line and you have any number of ferns or tropical plants. Press, drag, lift. Press, drag, and lift. Edit your shapes as you go. Everything's still wet, you have the opportunity. Press, drag, and lift. It can be an upstroke or a downstroke. Imagine all you can create with this one leaf. Number three, eucalyptus, my favorite. You're gonna create a C with the curved edge of your brush facing down. Repeat it on the other side and fill in with a stroke. Tip of your brush to create a little stem and you've got Let's it. Let's make a bunch of smaller eucalyptus leaves, cluster them together. They don't all have to be the same size. Friends, remember I'm keeping it simple today, I'm using all the same green pretty much, but imagine dropping in some other colors, some pinks, some blues. Oh, we could have so much fun here. But for the sake of exercise, Let's keep it simple. Add those stems with a simple downstroke, very little pressure or paint on your brush. You're literally dragging the paint down from the leaf you just added. Number four, the classic. This is a leaf we've painted so much here on this channel. Press, drag and lift, repeat, curved edge of your brush facing down and a little stem. Press, drag and lift can vary. Press quick, lift slow. Press slow, lift quick. Connect everything with tiny stems made by little pressure and the very tip of your brush, whether it's a dagger or a round. Curve your mark as you're doing the press, drag, and lift, and you'll be able to start creating these really organic clusters of the classic leaf. Press, drag, and lift once for a skinnier leaf and mirror the press, drag, and lift for a thicker leaf. You can even leave a little tiny bit of white space in between. It adds just a little something. Friends, I know this is a little intense, but if you're getting something out of this, give this video a boop, that's a like. Moving on to the short leaf. Just a note, don't worry too much about how much paint versus how much water is on your brush, just so your brush is gliding easily. This one's a quick press and a very short drag, and you're done. Let's get into it. Drag, quick. Change the angle of your brush by changing the angle of your hand. See that, see how my hand changes? See that drag, it's very quick and it gets even quicker as you go up the leaf, descending in size. Let's look at that again. Press and drag, curving up along one side of an imaginary line. Switch your hand, repeat those again, starting bigger at the bottom with the leaf size and going smaller towards the top. Add a little stem with the tip of your brush. The next two are similar, but different enough they each needed their own show. First up, the wiggle. This is a press, a longer drag, and as you drag, you're gonna wiggle your hand ever so slightly. I love this stroke when you wanna create a big leaf, but you don't have a big brush. One wiggle, go back again and repeat that same stroke starting at the top on the other side and widen at the base, grab some water or a different color and fill in the middle. 
there you have it. This could be a big floppy tropical leaf. This could be a maple leaf with a little more editing. All right, let's head into comments. I wanna know which is your favorite leaf so far. For me, it's definitely the short leaf number five. Yep, you guessed it. Number seven is the skinny wiggle. And this stroke is so similar. Press, drag, and lift with a longer, skinnier wiggle. Let's see how we use this in real life. What's most important about this stroke is the variation of line weight that you're gonna get by pressing harder or lighter. You can do so much with varying your stroke and using a long, skinny, wiggly mark. And you might've noticed I used a little bit of number five in there, the short leaf stroke, and look at the variation that you're getting. If you like this cluster idea and you wanna learn more about painting clusters, I'm gonna link a video below. You're getting there. Number eight is the dab. And don't forget, we're gonna paint with all these soon. This one is a short downward stroke and lift. Now create a cluster of these, all at different angles, but still facing each other and some touching. Connect them with tiny stems using just the tip of your brush. I don't really care what you call any of these strokes, just so you know how to use them. We're getting so close. Number nine is the long curve. She's similar to number two, but with a longer stroke and a single stroke. No mirroring on this one. This one is awesome for the leaves surrounding pods or seed clusters. Think wispy wildflowers, Queen Anne's lace, you get it. Imagine a central point in the middle and create these long curved strokes radiating out from that central point. The trick to getting that gradual shift from a thick stroke to a thin stroke all in one movement is a slow drag. Don't speed up that drag and you'll see a nice fine point at the end. Last but not least, number 10, and that's the V-shape mark. In real life, lay down these V-shapes in a compound format, which means one on top of another, one next to one another. You can layer with different colors. Keep in mind you want the bottom of those Vs radiating out from a central point, and that's going to create all different types of leaves. I am in love with this one. Which of the 10 are you most excited to try out? Head to comments, let's hear it. Next up, the painting, finally. So grab an old painting that maybe was left a little unfinished and let's embellish with all the new leaves we're learning about today. Starting with one of my favorites, number three, the eucalyptus leaf. And this time, friends, I'm gonna mix it up with the greens I'm using, that's for sure. Remember, make a backward seat, a forward seat, let them meet and fill in the middle. And then just some of those wiggly six and seven leaves. And every time I go back to the palette, you betcha, grabbing a different color. Number two, the long leaf, and let's make a little fern here. Just repeat that shape in descending size, connect with the stem in the middle. And I'm gonna let that paint run out on my brush and let that fern flourish behind those leaves that were there from the get-go. Everything is still damp in the eucalyptus down below, so why not go in with a darker color green and add some detail. Some additional leaves as well. Number five, that short stroke, and we're gonna lay those down next to each other on either side of an invisible line, and you're gonna have a big, fluffy, glossy leaf before you know. When I went to that yellow, I did rinse my brush in between because I wanted the color shift between the green and the yellow to be really noticeable. A quick note, I am using a round brush and I've pretty much been using the dagger the entire time, but I wanted to show you that the round brush can do all the things. Here comes number 10, those Vs. I think I could paint with this particular stroke forever. Okay, maybe I exaggerate, but it's so versatile. Isn't that gorgeous? Next up, number nine, the long curve. Gorgeous, gorgeous. You can add a little pod up there to the left part of the rose. Next up, the wiggle, because friends, it's time for a big old leaf. That's number six from our chart. You're going to mirror the same stroke, that long wiggle on either side, and fill in with color and water. And while that's wet, you can drop in any other colors you'd like, and oh, the magic will happen. I want to point out something that's really important. The names of these strokes are not important. They are just names, they're arbitrary. They're a way for me to help teach you about 10 different strokes that can make a zillion different leaves. So don't get hung up on the names and where and how perfectly to use them. What I want you to get from today's session is just a sense of the absolute incredible variety of leaves and clusters that you can get from just 10 different strokes. 
I went for my darkest green there and used the dab number eight over and over again, made it fluffier and wider at the rows, and as it went away from the rows, got smaller and more sparse. And just because you know how I like to mix things up with pencil, I'm heading in there with an HB pencil. It's not sharpened very well, but that's the point. And I'm going to accentuate some of these leaves here and there with a little bit of quick, quick outline. Oh, fun, fun, fun. If you want to see more about how I mingle different types of pencils and wet watercolor, watch the video. I'm going to link it below. Super fun. I've gone completely rogue. I'm adding pencil that isn't even over top watercolor, but have fun with it at this point because really that's why we're here to have fun and to discover our joy. And right now this pencil giving me all the joy. You want to know what else gives me joy? The color orange where it doesn't really belong. So I'm going to do a little of that. Grabbing a dark green, I'm going to head up top and add a little bit of number one, the needle, little pine needle action. And this doesn't have to just be pine needles. It can be all sorts of different textures. And a little bit more of number eight, the dab, just a viney kind of squiggly look coming out from the other side of the rows here on the left really helps the composition. I'm keeping it with the dark going in with some V's. I've got enough of that dark green on my brush going down to the eucalyptus, the very tip of my brush, adding a few whispery details in there for veins. Wow, that brush was full of that green. So I'm going to go in with a number four slash five, the classic or short stroke and add a few more fillers. And could I get through a painting without pulling out the white gesso? I just felt like I needed a little highlight here. This is a big dark area. The orange was fun, but it just didn't brighten things up enough for me. So bringing in the white. You could use a gel pen, you could use acrylic, you could use white watercolor or gouache. And letting that mix of gesso and watercolor run out from my brush. I'm just gonna add a few more details here and there and voila. Now, of course, these aren't the only 10 leaves, but they're such an incredible strong start. There are a bunch more. So I've put together a playlist all about leaves, Christie style. So go ahead, dive in and happy painting until next time.